For today's video lecture, we're going to review hand tracing. We did this a couple weeks ago with our while loops, and you work together in small groups to hand trace several while loops. And so it's time for a review, and we're also going to throw in some for loops. So first of all, why do we do hand tracing? Hand tracing is a useful technique for understanding whether a program works correctly. So you're going to do hand tracing not just for loops, but for all kinds of things when it comes to programming. And specifically for work for loops, it's going to help you determine if your condition is correct. It will also help you avoid errors. So if something is not going correctly when you're programming it, or if you just want to check before you even start, try doing some hand tracing. Here's the steps for creating a trace table. First of all, it's really helpful to have the code already written on a piece of paper. You can write it yourself on a whiteboard, but if it's already there on a piece of paper, it just saves you a little bit of time. You're going to create a column for each variable and keep track of the values of each variable as you hand trace. You're going to evaluate the condition of your loop to determine if you continue or if you stop. And you are going to keep track of your loop iterations. A hand tracing or using a trace table will help you answer all kinds of questions if one was ever going, going to come up on a test or just as you're working on your programs. So let's take a look at four examples. Okay, so let's actually do some trace tables. For this first one, this is a definite loop with the for loop, and I've got a variable s, and then I've also got my control variable n. So when I do my trace table, I need to have a column for s and a column for n. I'm also going to do a column for my iterations, just so I can keep track of how many times it actually loops. I have an initial value for s. And then now we haven't really looked at this before, but we learned in our, in our lecture before that even a for loop has a condition. So it doesn't really look like a condition, but let's just take a decide what it would be. So here I have n and I know that it's going to be up to but not including 5. So my condition would be something like n less than 5. But it's actually going to check to see if it needs to do an iteration. So the condition is a little bit tricky but it's going to be n plus 1 is less than 5. As long as that's true it's going to iterate again. So n is going to start out at 1 because uh, 1 plus 1 is still less than 5. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here. I'm going to have an iteration. And then inside the loop, s equals s plus n. So I'm going to take the old value of s, add the n to it, and I get 2. Okay. Now I'm going to test again. Is n, which is 1, 1 plus 1, is that less than 5? Yes. So I'm going to do a second iteration. n becomes 2. s equals s plus n. I'm going to add them together, and I've just done my second iteration. Now do I go again? n plus 1, so that's 3. Is 3 less than 5? Yes. So I'm going to go again. So we've completed three iterations. Let's just check again, see if we're going to go again. So 2 plus 1, 3. 3 is less than 5. I'm going to go again. I'm going to increment to 3. I'm going to add. And I've just done my fourth iteration. Now 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 is still less than 5. So I'm going to do another iteration. n becomes 4. s becomes 11. And I'm going to check to see, do I do another iteration? 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 is not less than 5. So I have completed my loop. So this hand tracing actually gives us a lot of information. We can see that we did five iterations. The final value of n is 4 and the final value of s is 11. So this could help us answer any number of questions. If the question was how many iterations, you've got the answer. If the question is what's the final answer of s, or what's the final value of n, the, this one hand tracing gives you lots of information where you can answer a question. So doing a hand tracing is actually very valuable. Let's take a look at the next one. Now this one's not a for loop, it's just a straight definite while loop. And we've got one variable x, and I'm also going to keep track of my iterations. The initial value of x is 1, and then we're going to test our condition of the loop. Is x less than 7? It is. So I'm going to do an iteration, and inside my loop I'm going to do x plus equals 3. So x goes from 1 to 4. 
And I'm going to test my condition again. Is x less than 7? Okay, 4 is less than 7, so I'm going to do a second iteration. Inside the loop, I'm going to increment x by 3, so it becomes 7. And I'm going to test my condition again. Is x less than 7? x is not less than 7, so I have completed my loop. You can see that you've done two iterations, and the final value of x is 7. So once again, you can answer lots of questions just by doing this nice little hand tracing. Let's take a look at a third one. Here I've got, and it's another definite loop with a while, and I've got one variable x. I'm also going to keep track of the iterations. The initial value of x is 0. And the first thing I'm going to do is test my condition. Is x greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So I'm going to do an iteration. Inside, I'm going to increment x. It becomes 1. I'm going to test the condition again. Is x greater than or equal to 0? Yes. I'm going to do another iteration. x becomes 2. I'm going to test again. Is x greater than or equal to 0? Yes. Another iteration. x becomes 3. You kind of see a pattern here that x is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is probably a mistake that somebody would have made, and this is an infinite loop. It's never going to end. So once again, you can answer a lot of questions. What's the final value of x? Well, it would be, you know, whenever it ran out of memory, and it's an infinite loop. Now let's take a look at one more that has a for loop in it. I've got a product, and I'm going to start it at 1. I've got x. This is my control variable. And I'm going to do iterations. Let's see if we can figure out what the condition will be. So x is going to start at 10, and it's going to go down, because I've got a negative 2 for the step, to 5. So I've got x, and it's going to be, instead of less than here, we're going to have greater than 5. But then here we had plus 1 because that was my step. Here I'm going to have minus 2. So I'm actually going to check to see if x minus 2 is going to be greater than 5. x is going to start at 10. Is 10 minus 2 greater than 5? Yes, so I'm going to have at least one iteration, and x will start at 10. Inside the loop, product was going to be product times x, so 1 times 10, and I get 10. Now I'm going to check again. x is 10. Is 10 minus 2, which is 8, is that greater than 5? Yes. So I'm going to do a second iteration. x is now lowered by 2, and the product is going to be product times x, or 80. I'm ready to check again. I'm going to put 8 in here. 8 minus 2 is 6. Is 6 greater than 5? Yes. I'm going to do another iteration. This becomes 6. My product, I'm going to multiply, multiply these together. Okay. And I've just done three iterations. Now, 6 minus 2 is 4. Is 4 greater than 5? It is not. So my loop is going to stop. I did three iterations. The product is 480, and x is 6. So you can answer a lot of questions by doing a hand tracing. It's a handy tool, and for this lesson today, you're going to get with a partner, and there are 10 problems for you to do a trace table. So for the answer, I'm going to look for a trace table for each of the problems.